You guys, the stage is set. Which one is better? The Xbox Series X or the PlayStation 5? We are going to be reviewing them to find out. So let's get it started. The PS5 has a striking design in two flavors. And it also kind of looks like a network router. If you are buying a next gen console for access to 4K Blu-rays as well as games, you will want the full fat version with the UHD disk drive. But if you have chosen a physical media free future, there's a slightly slimmer digital edition. This should cost also around 100 US dollars less. PS5 has CPU 8 core Zen 2 and clock up to 3.5 GHz frequency and GPU 10.3 teraflops, AMD Radeon up to 2.3 GHz frequency, 16 GB of DDR6 RAM and 825 GB storage with support for 4K and 8K. PS5 has what's known as variable frequency to make the most of the GPU and CPU respectively when necessary in the game. The PS5 can push through a data at 5.5 GB per second compared to the Xbox Series X at 2.4 GB per second. That could mean marginally faster loading time and less time spending on the loading screen. Both Sony and Microsoft have incorporated ray tracing technology that makes light and shadow look better in the game and also offer 3D audio for more immersive sound. Sony has an announced a Pulse 3D wireless headset. It also looks really cool, which also supports 3D audio. The new DualSense controller has built-in mic and upgraded to a USB-C charging port. There is also haptic feedback and that means firing different weapons will feel unique. Now coming to the PS5 exclusive games. First, we have the Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales. The narrative continues from Marvel Spider-Man and it is downloadable content, the city that never sleeps, during which Miles Morales is bitten by a genetically enhanced spider and gains power similar to Peter Parker's. A year after the game and its DLC, Miles has fully integrated himself into the black and red suit as an experienced Spider-Man while defending both his new home in Harlem and the rest of New York City from a gang war between the Roxxon Energy Corporation and a high-tech criminal led by the Tinkerer. Next is the Horizon Forbidden West. Horizon Forbidden West is an action roleplay game with a third person's perspective and control alloy. A huntress in a world populated by dangerous machines set in an open world or post-apocalyptic California, Utah and Nevada. Last but not least, we have Gran Turismo 7. This will be the first game in the series since Gran Turismo 6. To mark the return of the GT simulation mode, encompassing the long established and definitive single player campaign feature. The game will take advantage of the PlayStation 5's DualSense controller, Tempest engine and dedicated ray tracing hardware. If Sony has gone with the white router shape design for its PS5, Microsoft has gone with a tower based design for its Xbox Series X console. The console is running on 8 Zen 2 cores but at a slightly higher 3.8 GHz than PS5's 3.5. Not only that, but it's also having 12 teraflops of power with custom AMD RDNA 2 GPU make Xbox series at par with the high-end graphics card lineup. This is supplemented with 16 GB RAM, 
to ensure that everything can run smooth to get to 120 fps at 4k resolution xbox series x has 175 gb extra over ps5 xbox series x supports ray tracing and it will be light defining treat to play the games with ray tracing on Microsoft Minecraft transforms the, from blocky graphics and simplistic texture to entirely a new glorious reflective world with ray tracing. We will have to wait and see the FPS rate on Xbox Series X and PS5 with these ray tracings, as this can be exceptionally draining on the processor's power. The load time of the state of DK2 between Xbox One X and Series X was compared and Series X loaded the game within 10 seconds while the One X took almost a minute to load the game. For storage expansion, Microsoft has teamed up with Seagate to offer extra offerings of 1TB at a time. These can be slotted into the back of the console. Now coming to the Xbox Series X exclusive games. Halo Infinite Master Chief returns in Halo Infinite with his greatest adventure yet to save humanity. It is planned to be released in 2021, the sixth main entry of the Halo series and the 14th game overall. Next one is Senua Sega Hellblade 2. Hellblade 2, the follow-up to 2017's Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice back in late 2019. The game is coming to both Xbox Series X and PC. Microsoft has confirmed and it will be coming with the first support to the Xbox Smart Delivery technology that gives you access to the best version of the games on whichever system you are playing on. That means you can expect to see it on Xbox One too. Last but not least is Scorn, atmospheric first-person adventure game developed by Ape Software, an Xbox Series X console exclusive at launch. It will also be coming to Xbox Game Pass. Next, let's compare the game subscription service for both Xbox and PlayStation. Sony and Microsoft do offer their own subscription services in the form of PlayStation Now and Xbox Game Pass. PlayStation Now is Sony's game subscription service available for both PS4 and PC. It offers a collection of PS4, PS3 and PS2 titles to play the game included on your PS4. Xbox Game Pass it's available for Xbox One and Windows 10 PCs. It is similar to PS Now, but stands out in a few ways. The biggest difference is that the Game Pass doesn't offer game streaming. All titles are download only. This means that all the games you download work as if you bought them on disc or digitally. They can take advantage of Xbox One X hardware so if you play games on both Xbox and PC, Ultimate is a great deal. PS Now boasts over 800 games in its catalog across PS4, PS3 and PS2 games. Xbox Game Pass had around 400 games on offer. You will notice that Xbox Game Pass has more recent high profile games than PS Now. This is because all the Xbox Game Studio titles come to the Game Pass on the day of their release. Overall, we'd say that Xbox Game Pass has the edge thanks to its focus on quality over quantity. Getting high profile releases on a day one is a huge draw. And the service has more games that pe most people enjoy and want to play. So guys, to summarize, the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 are really similar to each other. But the Xbox Series X has a better CPU at 3.8 GHz and a GPU at 12 teraflops, whereas the PlayStation 5 has the CPU at 3.5 GHz and the PlayStation has the GPU of 10.3 teraflops. As you guys can see, 
The price between the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 Standard Edition is really similar. If you are tight on budget, I would recommend going for the Xbox Series S. So guys, coming to the final verdict. If I would choose one, I would have chose the Xbox Series X. Because it's a more powerful machine than the PS5 and has 1TB of storage. If you guys are fans of PS exclusive games, I would recommend choosing the PS5. Make sure to leave a like on the video and if you see a red subscribe button down below, make sure to click it and make it grey. And if you have any suggestions or questions for me, you can leave it in the comment section down below.